I had I've had multiple people email me about this. Naomi Wu and the silence that speaks volumes. Apparently, a queer uh, Chinese, dare I say, based on this picture, e girl. I think that's fair. Was recently disappeared by the Chinese government. That's a pretty um, salacious accusation. What exactly happened here? Uh, let me see. I've heard Naomi Wu before. Yeah, Welcome to my oh, channel. Sorry about the audio. That's from her YouTube channel. 1.6 million subscribers. I've, I've heard about Naomi Wu, also known as Sexy Cyborg. Um, she, does, she looks good. Yeah, can't deny that. Okay, so what's going on right now? In November 2019, Wu was detained by Chinese authorities for an interstitial Wall Street Journal interview expose piece on Chinese censorship in an episode of Netflix's Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj. Okay, so she's had previous run-ins with the Chinese government after talking with Western media about Chinese censorship. And there was a Vice article as well. The article which revealed details of her personal life drew criticism from when others would according to agree with Vice that she... Oh, so Vice left in personal details that she didn't think they would out of fear of retaliation by the Chinese government and also to protect her private life. Vice refused to comply with the agreement and published the details regardless. What? After Vice refused to retract the story where they doxed her, Wu created a video in which she made boots with tiny video screens, which displayed Vice's editor-in-chief's home address. Wu's Patreon account was suspended for doxing. Wu says this temporarily stalled her independent maker career. She returned to freelance coding for a brief period of time. Okay, so she's been active in doing stuff. All right, so what's happening right now? Well, there's a whole article about it, I guess. That's, this is quite an, quite an opening. Continue reading. That's crazy. <clears throat> okay, content creator, doing stuff, doing stuff. Wow, that's crazy. Um, where's the mass seller? Okay, so she's, she's very obviously combative and politically active. Um, we love a combative and politically active uh, sexy cyborg. Let's see. Though Wu's technical acumen has always set her apart, and while, yes, she also happens to be a beautiful woman, it was always her audacious authenticity alongside that unconventional cyberpunk aesthetic which guarded immense respect. Wow, she's an actual uh, anime character. That's crazy. She's actually like, yeah, I'm a hacker, like, a hacktivist, cyberpunk, social media guru, and also I happen to have, like, double E's. That's, that's, that's pretty crazy. Vosh, she was raised as a boy, too. What? Well, no wonder she got into coding. Is that on the Wikipedia page? Yeah. Wu was raised as a boy due to the one-child policy in China at the time. Okay. All right. She has a YouTube video about it, if I recall correctly. Well, I'm... I'm gr everything that I've learned about this woman thus far has made me remarkably interested. Like, this, this is all spectacularly interesting stuff that we are just getting thrown at us, like rapid fire, you know? Jesus. Okay, well... <clears throat> Naomi's partner, Kaidi, belongs to the Uyghur minority, further heightening the vulnerability of their situation. Okay? I'm okay, Katie's family likes me. Her mom has had a huge traditional Uyghur spread. I'm so full. Wow, that looks delicious. What the hell? Okay. Are white people, like, the only group that don't do crazy giant spreads? Because the only time white people in America do is for Thanksgiving. Like... Because I know, like, Mexican families do, because I would visit Mexican families sometimes while living in L.A., and they would have giant spreads. Italians do? Okay, but Italians are, like, the culinarily inclined pseudo-white people. Argentinians do it? Well, only half of Argentinians are white. Okay, listen, let's, never mind, let's stay focused. Cultural ambassador. I, I hate how this website, anytime I select something, makes this. I, I, don't, I don't want that. I, I just, I highlight stuff just to keep track of where I'm reading. Despite her primarily Western audience, Wu has consistently encountered unfavorable treatment from Western media, often tinged with misogyny. Notably, a Vice magazine reporter appeared to consider outing Wu without her consent, potentially jeopardizing her safety. Okay, so where does the Chinese government get involved here? Oh, by the way, I know it's been a while, so I'm just going to remind everyone about the uh, Uyghur Muslim genocide. So, um, starting about a decade ago, in the um, Xinjiang province of China, where there is a large Uyghur Muslim minority population, the Chinese government ramped up their surveillance to a 
not just significant, but like world record level, like the number of active security cameras and everything. Um, like the, like, e like every street corner, every junction, everything monitored all the time with Chinese Han, Chinese bureaucrats overlooking everything. There were also leaked documents from the Chinese government, uh, that talked about local Han Chinese citizens being deputized into identifying terroristic elements in the Uyghur Muslim minority population to refer them to detainment for cultural re-education. Uh, the characteristics that one could have, which would get you locked up, could include stuff like having a beard, something that Uyghur Muslim men have, uh, and Han Chinese men very often do not. Obviously, a lot of it was just an excuse to pack them all into re-education camps because the Chinese did not like the largely Uyghur Muslim-rooted separatist movements in the area. Like many large societies, the Chinese government is terrified of separationist movements, and they wanted to like stamp out the independent cultural, um, you know, flame going on in in the, in the Xinjiang province, uh, because China is very heavily Han supremacist, even though people pretend that they're not. Where do you learn about all this? From my streams and videos on it. You'll just have to search for those. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, oh, I should say by the way, the. Uyghur Muslim genocide, as we understand it, a cultural genocide, mind you, not a program of extermination, is done. Uh, I don't know whether or not the Chinese government considers themselves to have succeeded in this cultural rewriting, um, but they, it's more or less stopped. They won? No, I don't think they did. I think they gave up. My personal opinion is that they gave up. Um, the level of surveillance has de decreased significantly. Certainly there's still regional oppression, but I, I think the Chinese government had to back off because the world got pretty loud about it. Um, I think that I think that we got what might have been the closest possible outcome to the best case scenario there, which is that international pressure kind of forced China to stop. Obviously it doesn't like fix everything, but given the available range of scenarios that, you know, Oh, also COVID? COVID probably didn't help. They still torture people? Well, yeah, I'm not saying it's stopped entirely. I'm saying that the broader program has, if not ended entirely, has ramped down significantly. All right. Just wanted people to be reminded of the situation. Okay. So what has happened here? Yingjin, Beijing's LGBT center's executive director, provided the statistic that only 5% of Chinese people identifying as LGBTIQ are out to their families, with an added 0.1% being out in their professional lives as well. Jesus Christ. Um, God damn. All right. So do we have any more? There's been increasing pressure from the Chinese Communist Party to shut down uh, queer stuff in the country. They've banned uh, feminine men from being on TV. Uh, I believe that there were forced shutdowns of LGBT centers. Xi Jinping is a fascist, Vosh? Yes, he is. The Chinese Communist Party is a fascist political organization. Also, hi, Harris. It seems that she's disappeared it seems like a lot of things were closing in on her here. The association with a Uyghur Muslim, or not necessarily Muslim, but a Uyghur ethnic partner, um, being visibly and actively queer, and also being publicly critical of the uh, Chinese Communist Party. Okay, wait. I wanted to see when they got to the specific info here. This is the most relevant, I feel, bit of information at the end here. Um cybersecurity vulnerability, because remember, she's an actual hacktivist here. When I was able to speak to Miss Wu about the, quote, tea drinking session, euphemism for police harassment, she sharply conveyed her sense of vulnerability due to the lack of interest in her stepping away from her popular Twitter account, stating, literally, the only thing that was keeping me online the past few years was they were worried it would make China look bad if they cracked down on me. Now that they know I could be dead in a ditch tomorrow and no one would give a shit or say a word, I'm a thousand times less safe here. Having a real-life Chinese person posting here who does not 100% endorse every part of their China good slash bad narrative makes it harder for them, the media. So essentially she's saying that at, she sort of lost the implicit support of Western media. And as a product of that, she didn't feel as safe from harassment from the Chinese Communist Party. 
After years of doing this without anyone saying anything, on June 30th, out of the blue, they send plainclothes thugs to my house. Surprised, they were real cops. This event on June 30th was timed closely with events associated with a cybersecurity vulnerability report delivered to Tencent by researchers based at the Citizen Lab at Monk School of Global Affairs, University of Toronto. This recent reporting, authored by Jeffrey Nuckel, Zoe Reichert, and Mona Wang, addressed a serious encryption-related vulnerability in Tencent's popular Sogu keyboard software, affecting half a billion monthly users. Vulnerability itself was initially reported back on May 31st. Tencent dismissed the report as a low security risk and mocked it as not, quote, exciting. Tencent changed their mind less than a day later and nicely asked the researchers to not make the report public. Wow, that's embarrassing. From Tencent, sorry, my previous reply was wrong. We are dealing with this vulnerability. Please do not make it public. Thank you very much for your report. And Wu had publicly tweeted about some kind of vulnerability affecting the software. Five days after Tencent admits the IME vulnerability, the Chinese person in Shenzhen, who originally publicized it, suddenly gets dragged in by the cops and forced online. Her account concluded with an unsettling revelation about the risk she would face if she were to continue tweeting. Having already received two strikes from the authorities, a third could mean a years-long prison sentence. Chinese national security law established in 2020 empowers the government to access surveillance data from Chinese tech companies without the need for a judicial process, obviously. This grants authorities the ability to obtain private information whenever deemed necessary. It is possible Wu's tweets about the issues in the Sogu uh, software, of which she was aware, may have caught the attention of Chinese authorities who were searching for related information on Western networks. So I guess after all of that, she was already on thin ice with the Chinese government. It's Sago. Thank you for letting me know. We probably will hear about her eventually. I don't know that much about the Chinese prison system, but my understanding is that it's um, the incarceration times aren't as long as ours, but it's very uh, ideological re-education oriented. We'll have to see. Hopefully she hasn't been actually disappeared, though if she has, it wouldn't be the first time. I'm trying to see if there's any more information on this, but it, it, it seems like there's not. It's mostly just people referring back to this article. You know, for somebody who has like 1.4 million YouTube subs or whatever, there's no prison sentence? Well, she was only brought in fairly recently. There might not be a sentence length yet. If you Google her name, there are basically no articles talking about it. It's likely she's been forced offline as she is not well known in China. No, she's mostly well known to Westerners. It's possible we might never know. I think this is a pretty chilling rebuke towards some lefties who try to equate China and the West. No, no, no. The people on the quote-unquote left who, who defend China won't care that she's arrested. They'll sh say she's an enemy of the state. Like, they don't... You're, you're not going to convince a fascist to not believe in fascism because the fascism led to a person being arrested. Like, that's not... This isn't a big culture war thing. You know, Westerners get jailed unjustly all the time, too. The main difference, at least in this particular instance, is the lack of information. There's a lot of transparency here in the West, obviously not enough, not even remotely enough, but for the most part, when people fall in between the, uh, the gaps, you know, journalistic work can recover them. Also, we have freedom of speech here in America, and you don't in China. So being openly anti-American in America is not only allowed, it's fairly common, whereas being openly anti-CCP in China is literally illegal, you know, depending on how they decide to put that through legally. So that's a pretty critical distinction. God damn, she's the same age as me, born 1994. I hope she makes it out of this. Man, I don't want to hear Hassan's take on this. He's not going to talk about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's like one woman who got disappeared. There's no necessary, there's no reason why you would necessarily expect him to talk about it, but he's not going to. Yeah, I, there's literally like nothing online about any of this on the YouTube channel. When, when, when was the last video released? Is there last video was two months ago. Is there anything here in the comments? Nope. These are all two months old. No surge of attention. I don't know why that's surprising black in the Borg. Tech media relies heavily on China for business. It's very likely they're afraid talking about it would hurt their bottom line. Yeah. Not to victim blame. It's certainly not my intention, but I am really surprised she did not leave China earlier. That, like, that's wild to me. 
it was incredibly brave of her to stay there. I assume probably because of family or whatever. Yeah, partner, that kind of thing. Calm down, Ophelder. She has a partner that can't leave. Yeah. Can't leave? The partner can't leave? Leaving China is difficult if you're on a watch list? Yeah, I guess I just would have tried to leave at the, like, the earliest possible opportunity, but I don't really have much I can say about this. In the article, it explicitly says her partner and their family can't come with her if she wants to leave. Yeah. Two YouTubers, Lao Wai86 and Serpent ZA, both lived in China for years and were forced to leave under duress if you want more information. Interesting. Weirdly, she's been doing a lot of China defense on LGBTQIA+, and their lack of lockdowns on her Twitter over the past six months, so it's surprising she was disappeared. I would guarantee you anything that that was uh, coerced. If she was saying positive stuff like that, especially concerning, like, queer issues, it was almost certainly, like, pressure put in her by the government to do so. Or, like, trying to toe the line. That is true, Dino Man. We'll look at it later, Masamaki. Those two YouTubers post a lot of anti-China propaganda beyond what is correct. Yeah, it's, it's generally kind of hard to trust people who monetize a career out of talking about the horrible thing or place they used to do or be at or whatever. It's like how a lot of anti- like, you know, a lot of the most, like, ludicrously zealous anti-Islam types are former Muslims. Uh, there, there, there's the North Korea lady who just lies about whatever. Yeonmi Park, yeah. Oh yeah, Cuban expats as well.